that I'm looking at, that's the candy squash. It's doing amazing. It's been a bit since we've done kind of an impromptu tour in the garden. I'm trying to not drop my garden watering wand here. Um, well, we, I didn't accomplish the expansion that I was planning on, which is, I'm gonna show you here, I don't wanna get you sick. It, behind me, it's all the blue. That was the expansion. Um, just couldn't make, couldn't, couldn't swing it this year with the sheep being born and all the new things going on here. Um, but uh, Mr. Blue Jeans is building me two larger uh, raised bed containers, which you'll see behind me here in a second. Right there, that's the second one. Sammy and I are working on filling it. There's the other one, which contains squash and melons in it. So that's pretty exciting. Um, I have the tomato row. Both sides are going along. Sort of blew it. I used the holes that I had uh, used last year to plant in, as you can see on the other side here, and it, it's just too far away. I thought, oh, I'll go ahead and just put a, a string or a twine or something and pull the tomato up. Well, that's not really, that's not really what I intended. Let me see if I can get you over the fence here. That's not what I wanted. It don't look pretty. So <laughs> next year I'm gonna poke new holes closer, like like these guys are closer here. And then we'll have the tomatoes in a, in a better area. Um, but for now I'm calling it good and I just stuck those tomato cages that I don't like on the ones that are too far away and that's okay. I wanna show you my echinacea. Woohoo, remember the video that I did about why we use echinacea? Well, let me tell you, that sucker, that's overwintering with my forget about it technique. I forgot about it and it came back amazing and is looking like it's ready to bloom very soon. So that's exciting. Uh, we've got some hybrid melons in here. Two here at the end. The walking onions are doing their thing. I am extremely happy with the walking onions here. Take a peek at those. See, they're, they're walking, this is what they do. They drop this and it comes down and you can use these as shallots. You can use, this tastes just like green onion. Um, you can eat, the whole thing's edible and it just is self-sustaining and I love it. For now I have it in this smaller raised bed because the smaller raised bed turned out not to be as exciting as I thought it would be. So for now that's in there and then I think what I'll do is perhaps garden herbs will go in that raised bed. Things like tomatoes, peppers, I just don't feel it's big enough to handle those. So I think in time, it'll just be things like thyme and uh, maybe basil or, or whatever. Um, I'm going to show you my stuff that I have not gotten done. You see, you can see all along here. These are all the plants I've started and just haven't had two seconds to get them in. The new planter boxes will help. But of course, filling them with dirt in this heat, it's been just behind the eight ball, I think, is the caption for this this month for us, completely behind the eight ball. But that's okay, because we're still planting more than we've planted in the previous years, so that's good. I'm definitely getting more comfortable, so that's even better. Uh, before, I don't think I would have temp attempted this much. I mean, you know, there's a lot going on. <laughs> for someone who came into this begrudgingly, um, you know, there's we've got a lot happening, so, and I hope to expand. Um, potatoes, hopefully. I have a couple of new methods that I want to try out and show you all how. Uh, remember the strawberry, the pallet strawberries? Well, they're doing great. Got them all nestled in. We have the different varieties. Love how they're growing. I really love this planter method. Look at this one with all the runners that we just kind of popped down in here. This, this guy's going down I don't know where. Uh, at some point, I hope We'll probably put the strawberries in the berry patch when that becomes a real thing and not just partially a fence that we didn't have time to finish. Um, life of a homesteader. <laughs> but I'm really happy with the strawberries. And then I have my my arches. I'm so happy with my arches. Can you see them? It's not like I'm that tall or anything. Um, and then the asparagus that I, I'm gonna say it stupidly planted in our original raised beds, and now when they die back, I'm going to have to, to get them out. They have taken over everything. So trying to trellis the tomato, or the, the mushrooms has, really, mushrooms? The cucumbers, see this one's open, so that's easy. But these are all trellising nicely, 
as you can see, trellising nicely, right? Okay, but if we turn to the other side of the arch, oh, oh, where, where'd the cucumbers go? Wait, oh, I know they're in here somewhere. <laughs> There's gotta be cucumbers. Yeah, there are cucumbers behind these giant asparagus, so they gotta go. And I don't mean goodbye, I just mean they, they need to come out, which is why I'm patiently waiting for them to do their thing, and then I wanna take them out and transplant them. Uh, lastly, I bought 70 yards of tool on sale at Joann's because the tool holds up better than this fabric, which has already torn here. See that tear? Tool's doing great. You have to be careful with it. We have gravel and I, I handle it like a wedding dress. I'm very careful with it, um, but it's lasted. Um, cabbage bugs have been a problem. Let's see if I can show you this. I don't think I covered early enough. I did cover and I was thinking, oh my God, and I covered it. But I'm going to assume that the minute I put these in, I probably should have covered because this is, this is the artwork that I've been left by cabbage worms. They devastated a couple, but I've managed to start to get them back. Like if you look over here, we're not so bad. See? So I'm trying to catch up to them, but they had their way with their eggs. I, oh, it must have been thousands of eggs that I saw. So I've been coming out every single morning, going over them, checking them out, spraying every couple of days, and, and hopefully I'll catch it. Here's that crazy oregano that you hear me talk about so much. This is just a crazy bush. It's doing really well. Probably something else I'd like to eventually transplant because it's sort of taken over the raised bed and made such a large root ball that this whole area here and back is now all really hard oregano root. Uh, and then I just have my row of mint and uh, let's see, that's um, coarse radish waiting to be planted at some point, rosemary, more things I haven't had a chance to plant that are not doing good. It's so hard. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's been rewarding. But um, next year I have to do better on ratio of seeds that I start to ability of room to plant. <laughs> that's, that's my equation for next year. So anyway, I just wanted to give you all a quick, uh, definitely a quick update. Oh, the garlic, sorry, the garlic. I've got music and my favorite new Kuros. Um, so those are coming up really well and should be ready to pull soon. I've got scapes. I haven't even been able to keep up with the scapes. We usually eat them, but I haven't had time to even get those out of here. I'm just trying to water and, and keep everything hydrated with this heat. So we'll be uh, doing that new, new planting thing soon for the tomatoes that are here. And uh, thanks for walking along with me on this little quickie update of the garden tour. Uh, I appreciate you all so much and I love the comments that you leave and I hope your garden is doing really well and you got everything planted unlike me. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.